Good afternoon. Well, that was an uh, interesting opening. I'm totally flabbergasted still. If I could do stuff like that, I probably wouldn't have become a computer hacker. But I have uh, an ethical one, right? So I, I only work uh, for companies who ask us to do uh, computer hacking. So let's see. <laughs> right, so I don't do it by myself. Company asks us to do some hacking to check out the security, and then we write a report about it. And it's completely different from the unethical hacking. I'm here to talk about uh, security and privacy. And let's go back a few years, a few years, uh, maybe a hundred years, when life was still simple. Life was simple. Uh, it wasn't easy, it, it was a hard life, but it was simple. The technology was really simple. And if your machinery broke down, you could fix it yourself. No problems there. Uh, in some parts of the world, this is still common practice, but where we live, we've seen a huge transformation over the years, especially in the last few decennia. And we have um, gone from analog systems, really easy, simple systems, to very complex systems. Right? I don't know if I'm, uh, people still remember pagers, which were a little bit technical, and now we all walk around with smartphones in our pockets. And as we've heard this morning, those are more uh, capable of doing more computations than the early big computers that took up a whole room. So, um, and, and these uh, uh, devices like uh, smartphones uh, contain software. And more and more software, more and more complex software. If you take uh, my smartphone, for example, which happens to be an Android phone, phone this contains over 13 million lines of software code. And the problem is that we, um, even if you have a very capable programmer, they will make mistakes. And the more lines of code you have, the more mistakes you have. And in fact, if you, uh, research shows that if you have a really good programmer, they will make at least still one uh, uh, bug, uh, write an error every 6,000 lines of code. I have 30 million, so this device still has 2,000 security, uh, 2,000 bucks, and a bug can mean it sometimes glitches, or it can introduce a really a big security hole. People getting access to my data. So you might say, why not just hire some really bright programmers and try and find all those bugs and fix them, <laughs> right? You could try to do that, but the problem is that if you fix one bug, you in doing so, you need to rewrite the code. And by rewriting the code, you will introduce new bugs. So fix one bug, and another one will pop up. So really, this one bug per 6,000 lines of code is um, a bottom value you can achieve. And with ever-growing in complexity, we will have more problems. What makes it worse is that we are going towards a monoculture. We used to have many different kinds of systems, many kinds of different sorts of software, many different brands. But nowadays, everybody uses an iPhone or Android. Uh, everybody uses websites. So we are all using the same technology. And I'm showing you bananas, because bananas are a monoculture too, at least edible bananas. There's only a few races in the world that, uh, of edible bananas. And the people growing bananas are really worried about diseases. Because if a disease hits the banana, the edible banana, they will uh, uh, all disappear of this, of this planet. And the same with computer systems. If I find a bug in an iPhone, there's a huge number of iPhones there that I can try to abuse. Uh, I looked up the figures and I read that there are three million iPhones sold per month. Then there's also the problem that security is really invisible. What you see here is a, as an example of a system that is supposed to provide security. <laughs> But there's two sides to the story. One is a system should do what it's made to do, and this is functionality. And the system behind me does have this functionality. As long as you play according to the rules, it works. But security is that the system should not do what it's not supposed to do. And that is security. And that is something that is normally pretty invisible. Um, I can really easily tell that this phone does what it's supposed to do. I can make phone calls and do other stuff. But it's really hard to tell if this phone doesn't have any security problems. It's secure. And I'd like to make an analogy with uh, security systems that have been around for a long, long time, even before computers were around, mechanical locks. Um, here you see two keys, 
belonging to two different locks, and if I had asked you which one do you think is more secure, my guess would be that you would pick the one on the left, because it, it looks a bit more secure, more uh, interesting. But the fact is, you can tell if the, those locks are functionally sound by testing if the key opens the lock, but how do you know if the lock is secure? Meaning, without the key, you cannot open the lock. And that's really, really hard. And in fact, uh, the lock on the left does have a problem where you can open it really, really easily. And I don't know if there's a camera coming this way in a few seconds, because then I'll show you uh, foil impressing. Uh, mind you, there are ways to protect the lock against this kind of these kinds of attacks, but I've, uh, I will show it with a lock that has this problem. I have a lock and a key. The key fits the lock, but it doesn't operate. I have drilled the holes to the deepest, and I'm using a piece of aluminum foil, which I put over the holes. This is self-adhesive aluminum foil, which you can buy in any do-it-yourself shop. I insert it. Of course, it still doesn't open. And I'm using a pair of pliers to apply a little bit of extra force. I'm wiggling the key in the lock, and it's open. The, the pins have set themselves in the aluminum foil, and the key actually has the the imprinting in there. I can actually put it back in and with a bit, little bit of luck, yeah, it still works. <laughs> but this you cannot see from the lock by just looking at it. Um, now this is a trick that you, now you know this trick, you can ask your locksmith when you buy a, a, a dimple kind of lock, is this secure against this kind of attack? But with your mobile device or your computer system, that's really hard because you do not know which problems are there in all those lines of code. You don't know what to look for. And so the, the end users don't know what to ask for. And what you uh, end up with is people only caring for the functional aspects of their mobile devices. And what they do is they use their iPhone and jailbreak it to get extra functionality, to be able to install extra software. And little do they realize that by just jailbreaking and not taking any extra precautions, you open up your phone to anybody on the internet, full access. You can disable this, but you need to know that this problem exists. And if you don't, people will take over your phone and you get to see Rick Ashley, which you don't want to. <laughs> so people maybe don't know but in some cases they do know, but they just don't care. And I have a list here of 25 words. Well, they're actually passwords. And you're all now reading these passwords. And if you see something that resembles your own password, I suggest you change it immediately. Because those are the top 25 passwords used on sites such as Twitter and Facebook. And as you can see, people are not really paying any attention to the security of their system. So it's hard to see security. People are unaware and not interested. And another problem which increases the risk is the fact that more and more information is being stored. Right? More and more, every, uh, all kinds of information uh, are, is collected and is stored, and it's also aggregated. So we are building those huge centralized databases with, inf with information. You can do it the right way. We heard this morning uh, from TomTom Tom that their uh, data is uh, collected anonymously. But in many cases, uh, those databases uh, contain personal information. Uh, for example, uh, patient data, medical information. And computer risk, IT risk, is actually, well, risk is defined as the impact times the probability. The impact is increasing because there is more information online. The same goes for your phone. I mean, the phone that you used to have 10 years ago only held an address list, and now your phone holds a lot of interesting information. So the, the impact is higher, but also, as I've shown you, the probability is increasing because of the complexity increase. So the overall risk is increasing. Now let me show you a small demonstration. I have a, it's actually working. 
Yeah, I, I, I did a little dance for the demo gods, and it, apparently it works. Um, this is a, a, a demonstration of a website that is contains information. I can show an account. I see some information in, in, in the account. And this is, this is not a video or something. This is actually a running application on my laptop. And if I go to edit information, I can edit my information, but not my balance. But I can change my email. And if I include a, per, uh, a single quote, that's a bit like the aluminum foil in this lock. I know this trick with a single quote. And actually, this is the number one trick used to break into websites worldwide. If I, change, uh, if I press on change, you'll see a lot of gibberish. Well, actually, to me, being a computer person, I know exactly what this means. This means that this application has a problem. And I now know that I can manipulate the query and edit my balance and make me a little bit well, make me a little bit more rich. <laughs> no error. <laughs> this looks terribly easy. Uh, the sad thing is that in many cases it is actually uh, pretty easy to, to do these kinds of attacks. But then again, right, if you only test for functionality, you will not come across these problems. You need to check for security as well. Okay, to conclude, uh, actually, um, I cannot stop the complex complexity increasing even further. And I, I also don't want to. I mean, we've now got the internet, which is much more complex than the stuff we had 20 years ago. But it's, it's, it's uh, a risk. Uh, you have to consider the good things and the bad things. And I think the internet has brought more good things than it has brought bad things. So we have to learn to live with an ever-increasing complexity and compl uh, increasing risk. But you can try to reduce the impact, and we should stop uh, storing all the information we can. And what you can do yourself is try to think twice when you upload your personal information on Facebook or whatever other site you can find on the internet. And that's the message I would like to leave you with. Thank you.